Well, what, what can I say? Thank you for making the sequel. And I understand that you were a little bit wary of doing that. Why? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> I, I was wary of doing the first movie because I, I know so little about filmmaking. But when I met the directors, Bonnie Cohen and John Schenk, uh, I realized they had a vision for how to do this movie. And I also realized there have been some big changes in the last 10 years. Yes. The climate-related extreme events yeah. are more numerous and more destructive, unfortunately. More troops to BC today for the big fires there. Yep. The second big change is we now have the solutions, solar and wind and batteries and electric vehicles and all of the other new solutions that have come down so quickly in price that uh, they're spreading rapidly everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm watching this movie and I mean, I, you know, I know about all these things that you're talking about and most people do, but when you see it all pieced together, to me it's mind-boggling mm. that anybody can say uh, we're not having a problem here. How frustrating is this for <laughs> you, my goodness! Because I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. That's the appropriate attitude. Now turn that anger into a resolve to yeah. bring the changes. That's yeah. really what this movie is designed to do and to give people the basis for feeling the real hope that's out there. We, we are changing. The large carbon polluters have tried to confuse people with their propaganda and false doubts and that's been well documented. But you know, there's a new voice in this debate, and it's Mother Nature, yeah. and people are saying, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is really strange what's happening, and we need to fix it. Right, but when we see how hard everybody worked to make that climate accord happen, yeah. and then you see what President Trump, I, yeah. I mean, honestly, has he not, does he not think about his children, his grandchildren, I mean, just as a human being, how does that, it's got to frustrate you. Uh, yeah, um, I tried hard to uh, convince him otherwise, but and I thought he might come to his senses, but I was wrong. And, and when he made that speech, uh, I was concerned. Yeah, I was concerned other countries might uh, use it as an excuse to pull out, but the entire rest of the world redoubled its commitments. Thank goodness. Almost as if the world was saying, well, we'll show you, Donald Trump. Yeah. And, then the governors and mayors and business leaders in the U.S. said, we're still in the Paris Agreement and we're going to meet the commitments anyway. You know, there's a law of physics that says uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Sometimes it works in politics. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a real upsurge of activism. And I hope people will go to this uh, movie. Yeah. Go to the website, inconveniencesequel.com. It opens here August 4th. Yeah, absolutely. People, for sure, you have to. Uh, there's a very raw moment. There's so many in this film, but there's one where you're you're sitting and talking with a young man from the Philippines. Um, mm. My goodness, uh, you know that that was when I burst into tears. Mm. And for you, it's such a raw moment. What was that like for you to talk to that young man? Yeah, it was very emotional. Uh, Leonard Chan is his name, and he is one of the trained climate leaders. And uh, very emotional and it makes you realize there are millions and millions of people around the world who are having experiences like the one he did and, and we have to take that into our hearts and again translate it into a resolve to do the right thing mm -hmm. so that we give to our children the kind of world they deserve. Yeah. Okay, so it's been just over 10 years since you made the first one. Where are we going to be 10 years from now? Where are you hoping to be 10 years from now? <laughs> well, I hope 10 years from now we'll be able to say, okay, we've crossed the tipping point. The whole world is on side. We're going to solve this. We're on the way. I hope we can tell our children and grandchildren at that time, we did the right thing and we're making the world much better for you. Uh, and the choice is up to us. We have the tools. We have the solutions. we just got to implement them. Where do you keep up? Where's your energy from? Where, where do you get this energy to keep going and going and doing this press and doing these slideshows? I mean, it's it's such a great passion and we're so happy you're doing it. But how do you keep your eyes open every day? Uh, well, thank you. I, actually, it's a, it's a privilege to have work that justifies pouring all that energy into it. And it kind of gives you energy back in return yeah. when it feels like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, well, it's such an honor and a privilege to talk to you. Have Thank a great Q&A tonight here in Toronto. And uh -huh. you know you have many supporters here, myself included. And uh, yeah, what else can I say? Thank you, Mr. Thank Gore. you so Thank much. Thank you so much. For well, me. you made my day.